Hi, I'm Rev Risty, head rebel at Rebel Marketing, and I'm here with Kirk Michi, Michi, sorry, today, and um, he's helping me out on our um, project to talk about marketing, especially with professional services and that are selling like high value, high worth um, products and services. So, Kurt, can you tell us a little bit about what you do today? Yeah, so I'm an advisor in the private client business at AB Bernstein. Um, I work with professional investors, um, business owners, and wealthy families to help them get to kind of whatever the next stage may be, whether that's um, investing proceeds of sale or um, diversifying portfolio or working with the other family members to kind of work on legacy. Okay. You know, I thought it was funny, Jennifer, who reintroduced us, uh, I think, believe she said, you help make people rich. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might, I might characterize it differently. First of all, that's not a bad lead in. I mean, uh, <laughs> no, you know, it was a I good think, one. Who doesn't want to meet that guy? <laughs> right. I would say I help keep people rich and get richer. I would say that most of the people I work with are uniquely successful okay. in an area and I help them in this specific area. Okay, is there a certain type of client that um, benefits most from what you do or? Yeah, I would say um, people who've been blessed with um, uncommon success and resources and maybe a little bit cursed with complexity, those tend to be the people I work best with. Okay. Great. So, as you know, Rebel Marketing, we're a marketing firm, so I would love to learn a little bit more just about your top level marketing strategies here mm -hmm. as a financial planner, wealth management. What are what are the top strategies the company uses and what do you find that works? Yeah, so it's ever evolving. There's what historically worked. We're 51 years old this year. Wow. Um, our business has always been word of mouth. Um, for 25 years, the firm ran two advertisements, one on its first day in existence, a one-page ad with the name of the firm oh. in the center of the page, and one on the 25th anniversary with that same thing and 25 years underneath it. Was that like in the U Union Tribune? In, or? It was in the um, Wall Street Journal and the New York Times. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the firm, <laughs> I mean, Look, the firm is a big, well-known Wall Street firm. Um, so those things sort of um, quietly said a lot more than lots of other rhetoric might say. Got it. Okay. And then as for as your own marketing or business development, what are the types of tactics that you use that mm -hmm. you find work well? Yeah, so um, that has evolved also but less so in the sense that um, our business is by referral only, which isn't to suggest that if somebody found us out of the blue mm -hmm. um, that we don't work with them. But um, typically, it's referrals from existing clients who have um, a, a clear understanding of what we do, or it's adjacent professionals, people like tax CPAs or estate and trust attorneys or merger and acquisition attorneys, um, you know, or other adjacent professionals who work with the same kinds of clients, but in a different area. And so a lot of times the relationship's collaborative. Mm -hmm. And so we refer to them, they refer to us, we get each other involved in each other's businesses. Okay, I like that. I think that um, especially in this kind of digital age, everyone's talking about digital marketing and click-throughs and conversion rates. And I think a lot of times as marketers, we forget that um, there's very much a relationship base to any business um, that people are, you know, purchasing um, from another person, not just a company. And so I find the referral only um, methodology or approach really interesting and I feel like those are the things that some of the really kind of bigger more established firms have figured out and learned um, would you how would you recommend maybe a younger firm or even an agency my, myself kind of take that approach mm. versus this more you know kind of online driving yeah 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 so look I think if there were an easier way um, to use digital tools um, to to generate business or um, at least generate leads and then pursue them in a more kind of um, traditional way, 
we might do it. We just haven't found that it works that well. We, um, you know, we push out podcasts, we push out interactive um, kinds of materials to people that we engage with. Um, we work to build a robust website that kind of gives um, a terrific introduction to not only the firm, but a lot of things that we do. But ultimately what ends up happening is um, it's a, a family or an individual sitting across the table bringing in statements or the letter of intent from a transaction they're contemplating mm -hmm. and kind of asking how we can help with that. And typically what's happening there is sort of an exchange of knowledge that wouldn't lend itself um, to just sort of bullet points, right? It's right. A, you know, interactive, kind of like you would do with your accountant, certainly the way you would do with your attorney. Mm -hmm. um, so. We haven't seen great examples of professional service providers being able to generate that kind of thing just with digital marketing. Right, right. Do you, um, I guess, you know, maybe more this more business development, but are you going out and networking a lot, just getting in front of people? I know you yeah. mentioned you yeah. speak a lot. Yeah. Does that help? Yeah, I think it does. I think that. Um, uh, when people are looking to hire an investment advisor or an advisor of any sort, um, they want to pre-experience what you know mm -hmm. without being a client first. And so um, I haven't found that networking per se works all that well, but where um, you know we get the opportunity to say speak in an event and talk in an area where we have subject matter expertise. Um, then the firm's research and experience and talent and sort of differentiating characteristics start to come through with that talk track. Okay, that's that's uh, I, I like that. And um, you mentioned also podcasts. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. I think that's something that's really grown over the last couple of years and has really taken off. But I still think it's a mystery to people. Yeah. I think um, podcasts and video um, have grown pretty significantly. Um, we've found that um, we can push out an email with an introduction or an overview of an area that we think is particularly interesting or insightful to people right now. Mm -hmm. And um, you know they'll listen, whereas if we called them and left a voicemail and said, hey, I'd love to chat with you about this if you get a minute, um, you know, they may or may not, they might have the intention to want to get back to us, but it's pretty easy to listen to a podcast in your car or while you're shaving or, you know, kind of however else you can consume that content, um, you know, in a way that's useful to you. Mm -hmm. We found the same thing happening with video. Many of our, um, you know, best investors within the firm and our smartest research people will record, you know, 90 second to three minute videos mm -hmm. in an area where there's something going on in the markets, where there's something going on with people with complex situations that are particularly useful. And they're hearing the best thinking of the firm in these right. short little videos or podcasts. That's great. Are they kind of just doing that ad hoc or you guys have a videographer coming in, you're scheduling it with topics? Yeah, not a lot of, not a lot happens at Bernstein um, ad hoc. Um, <laughs> Noted. The, the, the firm has um, more than 500 of its 3,500 employees dedicated to research and portfolio management. Okay. And um, thinking about all of the big questions and then digging into all of the kind of relevant evaluative stuff um, becomes a big part of things. So what happens with that is that um, as an investment team, as a research team, they think about um, what's going on out there and try and make sense of what's happening in the headlines or the financial markets in a way that's um, accessible and digestible for clients that have a limited amount of time but a lot of interest. Great. That's really great. I mean, you guys are doing a lot. You don't think of really wealth management or financial planners doing. Um, obviously, you guys have lots of years experience, so I think there's some value to that. Any last thoughts or anything that you're doing that my audience would be interested in? Yeah, I think that um, there's there are so many um, good and talented and unique um, ways to access wealth management, whether it be um, uh, 
uh, you know, fintech and the more technology enabled solutions or the independent planner or the major investment banks or, you know, firms like ours. That's the largest independent research um, effort on Wall Street. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the key thing is um, for people to understand that um, working with a firm with enough scale to drive down the cost of delivering wealth management and research, while at the same time working with people that have enough local exposure and kind of face-to-face -face contact is really, really key. And that is probably, you know, kind of no matter what we create in terms of content, mm -hmm. getting that point across and helping people understand that we have lots and lots and lots of experience and scar tissue with helping them <laughs> navigate these things uh -huh. is really, really critical. Great. Well, thank you so much for taking some time to meet with me and speak with my audience. Um, if someone really was interested in learning more about Bernstein and what you do, what would be the best way for them to get a hold of you? Okay, Bernstein.com. I'm searchable on the website. Okay. And certainly calling me directly at 424-365-2525 gets the job done too. All right, great. Well, thank you. I really appreciate your time. Thanks, Rep.